What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in our video. This one's going to be about how to know God's will in your life. And this video is going to be very, very powerful and important because we're living in a generation, especially with young men who are living life uh, just on pleasure. And no one has a purpose no more. No one knows what their purpose is. And uh, a lot of us didn't have fathers or we didn't have, you know, that mentor in our life, someone who could put us on game with knowledge or wisdom. We didn't have that. So we just drowned ourselves with pleasure because best believe a man who doesn't have a purpose will drown himself in pleasure. And when you find yourself on your purpose and, you, and you know, you kind of like falling back, you notice you find yourself more in pleasure, right? So God's will and no one after you watch this video, there's no way you can say, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I want. God wants me to do my life, blah, blah, blah. This video is going to answer all your questions. Okay, so let's get it. Let's go. How to know God's will in your life. The first thing, first and foremost, is it has to be purpose over pleasure. Okay, even the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17, a man who is in love with pleasure will be a poor man. Okay, and it also says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, to flee uh, youthful lust and follow after righteousness, faith, charity, etc. So make sure you guys check out all the verses too. I'll make sure um, I'll leave them on the screen. But one thing I noticed in life, guys, whenever I was further away, I, I, whether, whether I wasn't operating in the will of God, I found myself more operating in pleasure, okay? Uh, you know, we all battle the flesh, but the one thing is you don't want to be a slave to your flesh. You don't want to be a slave to pleasure because once you're a slave to pleasure, you're now your purpose is driven away from you. And when you're a slave to purpose, you're not even thinking about uh, pleasure no more. And that's actually, you know, being a slave to Christ. You're either a slave to Christ or a slave to sin. See how it all correlates together? So knowing God's will in your life is your purpose. And now you might say, well, Mark, what is my purpose? And I'm going to go over it through this video, okay? So you want to make sure you instill that in your, in, when you renew your mind, which I'm going to talk about pretty soon, is purpose, 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 okay? Whenever you feel like you want to operate, let's say your flesh is waging war against your spirit, and you're in the spirit, but your flesh is raging war, right? Uh, you always got to remind yourself, okay, I, ha I have a purpose in life. God has a purpose in my life. That's powerful because you can have a purpose in your life through worldly things, right? But when you have a, a God-given purpose, that's powerful, okay? So, yeah, I just want to put that out there, man. It's purpose over pleasure. Number two is suffering for righteousness' sake, okay? I know people don't want to hear the word suffering, but, yes, when, when you follow Christ, it is suffering. And the reason why it's suffering is because... Uh, you're denying your flesh, and your flesh is always wanting to sin. It is always wanting to rebel against God. It is always wanting to do the opposite of what your spirit is contrary to do. So always keep that in mind. When you're suffering for righteous sake, that is good. That means even the Bible says, if any man, Christ says that, if any man follows me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross daily and follow after me. So that's a life of suffering. Now, of course, when you're suffering for righteous sake, because you could suffer for being a murderer. You could suffer for doing evil things, Right. That's not, you know, that's not for righteousness sake, okay? So always understand that when you're suffering for righteousness sake, you're going to go through it. But always understand there is a reward at the end. And also there's Bible scriptures that can correlate to here. It says that when, before God uh, makes you perfect and settles you, that you're going to have to go through suffering. Okay, that's in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. You're going to have to go through trials and tribulations. You're going to have to go through it for your righteousness sake. Now, like I said, you can go through trials and tribulations because of your evil doings, because you reap what you sow, you know, what the world calls karma, the Bible calls reaping what is sowed. But for righteousness sake, okay, even uh, look at the book of Job. Job was suffering for righteousness sake. Okay, what happened to him wasn't like he reaped what he sowed. He was just suffering and through the midst of all that, he never gave up the faith. He never cursed God. Um, he never strayed away from God. Okay, so you have to embrace and prepare yourself to go through the same things. Maybe not the same like Job did, but you might, you're going to have to suffer in the flesh, suffer righteousness sake. Okay, so always keep that in mind. And number three is keep the Ten Commandments of God, okay? Um, a man came up to Christ in Matthew chapter 19, verse uh, 19 to 21 to 26. Um, and he asked he asked uh, Christ, uh, you know, what do I do to, in, to inherit eternal life? And Christ told him to keep the commandments of God, okay? So we all know the Ten Commandments. I have many videos on that. So keeping the Ten Commandments, that, that is key. That is, that is your power, okay? Uh, the Bible even says that here is the patience of the, of the saints, that they uh, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Christ, okay? So no one can say, what is my purpose? Is your purpose as, as a child of God, your purpose as a warrior for Christ, or even just a follower of Christ, is just to keep the Ten Commandments of God, okay? The faith in Christ and the Ten Commandments of God. If you don't know what the Ten Commandments is, I already have many videos, or you could just Google it and stuff like that. But yeah, number four 
is operate and move in faith, okay? So we all know what faith is, right? But who's actually moving in faith, okay? Who's actually taking the, the, the leap of faith, you know, when people, like, for instance, let's say, for example, right? Uh, when I was of this world and God was calling me, remember, many are called, few are chosen. And, you know, I had to take that leap of faith of, you know, stepping on that narrow path to jump to not only because they step to jump on that narrow path to to escape you know the pleasures of this world to escape babylon pretty much right spiritually okay to escape babylon and you know and i understood that once i got on that narrow righteous path that i'm going to lose everything you know i'm going to lose my friends my loved ones maybe certain possessions that you know i was doing and in, in, in when i was walking with the devil unknowingly okay i had to lose give that all up and I had to operate in faith as in I knew that I wasn't going to get betrayed by family, by friends, by loved ones, etc. I knew that, but I still, through the faith that preserved me, and now I be, through my faith, that mustard seed that was five years ago, I'll never forget, a small mustard seed is now a big old tree, and now people are eating off of my tree from what I went through, okay? So always keep that in mind, my, your faith, you know, remember the Bible says you got to walk, uh, don't... Um, don't walk by sight, walk, walk by faith. So that means that the trials that you're going through, uh, let's say if you're on your purpose, right, and you, and you experience a flat line, which everyone goes through. You experience a time when you feel weak. Uh, even Christ felt weak. You experience a time where maybe you 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 feel like, the, you know, you're going hard and you're not seeing the rewards. Usually when that happens, guys, you're being, you're, your blessing is near. I'm telling you, I've, I've seen it all, experienced it to myself. Whenever you feel like giving up, whenever you've been putting in the work every day, you know, you've been putting in the work for God, man, you know, and doing doing what you got to do as a man of God, right? Or as a woman of God. And three, four months, a, a year, two years, three years, five years, and you just don't see anything. Usually when you start to feel that way, that means a blessing is near. Remember, always understand this. When the blessing is near, the devil is going to try to stop your blessings. He's going to try to do whatever you can to discourage you, send people your way to trap you, to ensnare you. So that's why it's important to walk with wisdom, okay? Wisdom, the Holy Spirit, and, you know, don't give up. You know, always understand that this is a battle, man. Okay, this is a battle. Every single day is spiritual warfare, okay? So operating and moving with faith. Remember, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So when you're on your purpose, you're working Okay, and through your faith, so you're so it doesn't really even feel like work, even though it is, but it really doesn't because your faith is making it move. Okay, faith moving mountains. All right, number five is the renewal, the renewal of your mind and putting away the old man. Okay, the renewal of your mind is thinking different. You no longer have a worldly thought pattern like most people do. Okay, remember we all had that uh, worldly pattern where we thought carnally. Okay, remember the Bible says in Romans chapter eight verse six to seven, it says that. Um, having a carnal mind is death, but having a spiritual mind is life and peace. So when it comes to doing God's will in your life, you must operate spiritually. Okay. You must have a spiritual mind and understand when things are happening in your life, whether good or bad, you, you move with the spiritual mind. Okay. When you move with the carnal mind, you're going to be led to confusion. Okay. You're going to be led to doubt, you know, and all those type of things. So the renewing of your mind, thinking spiritually, understand that certain things that are happening in your life is linked to spiritual warfare, okay? And we all know how we fight against spiritual warfare, you know, having the armor of God on, prayer, uh, fasting, you know, your obedience, stuff like that, right? Okay, um, you know, and having a prayer life too. Let's put that up there. How could we forget a prayer life, man? Because we got to pray without accusing. So there you go. How, and also putting away the old man. What does that mean? Ephesians chapter four, verse 22 to 24 talks about putting away the old man and being renewed. Okay, what does that mean? It means that what was what were you doing before you became born again? What were you doing before you, you were on a narrow path? Okay, a lot of us were de dead dead in sin. Okay, not saying all of us, but most of us. I can speak for myself too. Dead in sin, lost, confused, uh, no Holy Spirit, um, don't have Christ in our life. You know all those type of things. And but when we put on the new man, we became renewed. You know we we now became spiritual. Okay, you know the old man. The old man was this as corrupt by sin, was corrupt by dis, our deceitful lusts. Okay, so we got to put that away. The Bible says that. And when you put that away, your mind becomes renewed. Okay, and like I said, guys, it's important to have a prayer life too. Okay, whenever, now, now don't only pray when times are hard. Because that's what most people do. When times are hard, they want to pray. Then they want to seek the most high. They want to call to the Father. But you want to also be praying when times are good. Okay, so when the, the bad times do come up, you're good because you've been praying. You've been steadfast in that prayer, man. So always keep that in mind. All right, number six. This is also the most important thing, man. 
this is this is the most important well i mean all this is important but it's to seek god's kingdom every day okay that is what your purpose is guys that is what the will of God is, man, to seek God's kingdom. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you, okay? So when you seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, what, what, what does that mean? Some people might say, you know, what does that mean, okay? It's to depart from sin. It's to be obedient, okay? It's to keep your mind kingdom-minded, okay? Most people have a carnal mind. When a, a carnal mind can't be kingdom-minded. So have a kingdom mind. That, okay, that I have the power of the Holy Spirit. I have, you know, I have the the authority. Um, I have I have the wisdom, the knowledge, you know. Once you once you become age and mature and you start to realize that I could conquer anything, that I, I could do all things with Christ, okay? When you're seeking God's kingdom, I'm telling you, this is the most important thing. You now have a purpose. This is one thing that's happened last year when I was, you know, I wasn't lost, but I was more like, you know, what what does God want me to do? And I started seeking God's kingdom and I started, you know, uploading more videos and the blessings started to come, man. And now not to say that you got to make YouTube videos. Some people don't want to do that, which is perfectly fine. But do what you love. OK, do what you love to do and seek God's kingdom and watch God move in your life, guys. I promise you that, man. Make sure it's linked and centered to the kingdom of God and, you know, God's purpose in life. Because not all of us have the same purpose as in, like, me, I'm here to preach. Not everyone's meant to preach. doesn't mean that you can't be saved or that I'm better than you. Absolutely not. Okay, so this is how to know God's will in your life. Purpose over pleasure. Suffering for righteousness' sake. Keeping God's commandments and having the faith in Christ. And operate and move in faith. A prayer life, which is number seven, I guess. Right there. And uh, renew, renew your mind, putting away the old man. And see God's kingdom every single day. I love you guys so much. If you guys made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video on all social media platforms. If you guys wish to support me too, my links are down below in the description. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.